Hi, I'm Andy Webb from BeCleverWithYourCash.com. Welcome back to my channel. If you haven't already, please do hit that subscribe button. And if you find this video useful as you're watching it, that little thumbs up icon will be fantastic too. Just click that, that's the like button, and it helps YouTube know that what I'm telling you is good stuff, it's useful, and it will show it to more people, and they in turn are gonna benefit from what I'm saying. And what I actually wanna to talk to you about today is this. This is my Curve card. Uh, it might, it's not a bank card. It's sort of a special card, a sort of super card, if you like it, where you can attach loads and loads of different bank accounts, credit cards, all sorts of things to a single card. It works a little bit like if you're familiar with Apple Pay, Google Pay, Samsung Pay, whatever it might be, with your phone, where you can have multiple cards all showing there, and to pay, you just tap your phone. Well, rather than using a device, it uses uh, this debit card, this MasterCard here. Now, it's, I think it's, it's pretty, pretty good in lots of ways, but there are some downsides. So what I wanna do is take you through how it works, the kind of things you can do with it, uh, and again, point out some of those pros and those cons. Before we get started, let me just quickly show you, though, that there are three different types of Curve. Here's the Curve website, and if we go into uh, this little tab here, we'll see there are three different options. So we have got the blue, the black, and the metal. Now, uh, the blue one is absolutely free. It's not going to cost you anything at all. And there are certain standard features you get with that, which are the main ones I'm going to focus on right now. The next one up, this black one, that's going to cost you $9.99 a month. Uh, and there are a few extras on there on top, just a couple of things, mainly this one here down the bottom, uh, that worldwide travel insurance. But if you get a few little extras as well, a few increased allowances. And the final one is $14.99 and it is Curve Metal. Again, you get more insurances here, a few extra features and benefits. Uh, and you also get this premium 18 grams metal card and a choice of three colors. Now, personally, I think that's a, a bit of a, stupid thing to be sort of taken on by. I know lots of people like this, they like having that premium card, but you're paying a lot of money for it. But I will go through all those different cards, what they essentially do offer, how they differ at the end, so you get an idea of which one you should be going for, which one might work best for you. So let's just go back very simply to how this works. As I say, you when you apply, and it is only via the app, you have to have a smartphone, most of you are gonna have that, that's fine. You download the Curve app, um, and then what you do is you make uh, apply there and then. Now there is actually a bonus code, you can find different ones for this at different times. Uh, I've got one which I will share in the links below. So if you want to get that free five pounds right now, it does sort of change from time to time. Uh, you enter that code when you apply, free five pound credit applied uh, to your account when you make your first purchase with your Curve card. And you need to do that within seven days of applying. Okay, so it's not long, but you can get a free five pounds. Anyway, so you open up the app, make your application really simple. And because this isn't a bank account, you are not gonna be sort of credit checked for anything, okay? You are literally applying to get your hands on the app and to get your hands on one of these cards. When you've got that, uh, done all that, I so say the card will come in the post, they say it should only take a few days, uh, that will come to you and you can start using it then. You actually can view your card uh, on the app, it has a feature on here where you can see the long number, you can see the expiry date and you get those three digits from the back as well, so you can start using it digitally straight away. But to use it, you've then got to add your cards. And this is the real kind of trick that you get with Curve, what makes it, I think, stand out, makes it pretty special. You can add any Visa or MasterCard to the app. You do that very simply. Most of the time you can take a photo, you hold your phone over your banking card uh, and it will kind of pick up all the data and bring it through, put it all through. Sometimes you have to manually enter it. And it does work with pretty much most Visa and MasterCards. It should work with all of them, actually. Now, that means you can add uh, your current account. If you're like me <laughs> and you have got multiple cards for different reasons, again, that's another video for another time. I have got an article about why I've got so many different bank accounts over on the blog, which I will share and link through to. Uh, but if you've got lots of cards, you can have them all on the app, and that means you can use this single debit card to use them. So you don't have to carry around with you so many different cards in your wallet, making it really unusable. You can have it all on a single card. I think that's really, really handy for lots of reasons, which I'll get to in a minute. Now you might have noticed one thing I didn't say is you can't use American Express. When it first launched, you could use American Express, and that was great, and I used it a lot more when I could have Amex on there. Unfortunately, Amex decided they didn't want to be part of Curve, and they withdrew, withdrew all the support. Now, that was over a year ago now. Uh, Curve are still, I'm sure, in the background trying to get Amex on there, because they know that would be great for their business. But at the moment, as it stands, just Visa and MasterCard. 
Um, you can also add your curve card, by the way, to your phone as well if you want. So you don't even have to carry it around with you. You can have it just there on your phone as long as it's Apple Pay, Google Pay, Samsung Pay. Now, when you go to spend with your Curve card, whether it's, say, on your phone or with the card itself, um, you have to obviously make sure you activate a card in the background on the app. Now, I'll show you quickly here how that kind of looks in your wallet. Um, so you have, let me sort of scroll in there, let it focus for you. There, I've kind of got my nationwide sort of flicked in, but you've got other cards as you go along. So that was a bit blurry. I'll put a little cutaway in. You can choose the first time you pay, you can click down, and that is your default card. And that means you've always got a card connected to your curve when you go to spend. If you want, though, you can change that before you make that transaction. So it's really quick, it's re it is instant. So I've done it before at the till. I've gone in and I flicked through, select the card I wanna pay with, then got my curve and swiped it or tapped in the pin, whatever it might be. Um, and the transaction has gone through to the right card behind it. And essentially, when it's doing this, it's acting as kind of like a third uh, a middleman between the bank, your banking card, and the retailer who you're uh, spending the money with. So that means when you are uh, looking at your bank statement, all the transactions come up as CRV, so short for curve, then the name of the retailer, then the normal transaction you would see in your statement. So that's uh, how you know on your normal bank statement or credit card statement that you spent with curve. Within the app, you will see all those transactions appear underneath each individual card. So if I've got my nationwide current account, for example, it will appear there. But if I use my uh, John Lewis uh, credit card, it will appear there. If I use my business uh, debit card, it will appear there. Um, and really, really easy, really simple to see it individually under each card. If you want to within the app, you can also just see all your transactions from all your cards in a single timeline, which is quite handy if you want to sort of just see all your spending in one place, if you do use it, say, for all of your spending. Um, now, one thing I should, a couple of things important to point out there about that kind of idea of it being a middleman. There are a few sort of downsides that, that come with that. One of them is that if you are using a uh, specialist credit card, so I mentioned there I've got a John Lewis and Partners credit card. Now, this offers me half a percent cash back at pretty much any time I spend a couple of quid, but at John Lewis and Partners, it will give me 1% back, or at Waitrose, it will give me 1% back. Now, if I had used my John Lewis and Partners card, at John Lewis or Waitrose via the Curve card, it won't necessarily know that I'm shopping in those shops. So it actually would only give me that half a percent. It won't give me that full extra uh, bonus of half a percent. Similarly, you know, sometimes you get your credit cards, your banking cards have special cashback offers. Um, so recently I got a, a beers from Beer52 via my NatWest account, my NatWest current account, and it was a massive sort of 75% off or something like that. And if I use that from my Curva card, uh, even though the underlying card was NatWest, I wouldn't get that offer at all. So you've got to be careful there about missing out on sort of benefits that you get specifically uh, with your underlying card that you've attached your Curve card to. The other thing that's important to realise, having that intermediary, is you don't get, if you're using a credit card, you don't get Section 75 Consumer Protection, which can be really, really, really important. Now, this is where if you spend at least £1 on your credit card for something that costs £100 or more, then you are, by law, your purchase is equally protected by your credit card company as it is by the merchant. So if something goes wrong and you need to make a claim, like I had this for a problem we had with a sofa uh, earlier this year, I could go to the credit card company if I'm not having any joy with the sofa company and get the money back that way. If you do this, there has to be a direct relationship between the card provider and the retailer. 100% it has to be them to them. There can't be anyone in between. Now, there are lots of grey areas here, such as booking sites, how do they factor in, but, but Curve absolutely breaks that chain. So you do not get Section 75 protection. They do have their own increased Curve Consumer Protection Scheme, which offers protection up to £100,000, however you spend your money. So there is some protection if things go wrong. However, again, that is not a legal protection. So I haven't used it myself. I don't know how good that it is. So it's something to bear in mind. So personally, I would be using my credit card directly for any of those expensive products rather than using Curve. Now, one feature that I really, 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 really like with Curve is the ability to something called go back in time. And it's even got a little sort of DeLorean flux capacitator style graphic that comes with this. The idea here is, uh, as I said, you can choose in before you make a purchase which card you want to spend with. Yeah, So you say, I'm going to spend it on this card, tap it on the app, and that will be the one that your money goes on. Now, if you forget to do that before you make a purchase, or you want to say, 
move it around at a later date, then you've got 14 days to do that, to go into the app and go hit, go back in time, and it will move it uh, to a different card. You have that cho option to do that. Now, you can only do this once per transaction, so you've got to make sure you move it. You do want to move it, and you're moving it to the right card. Um, but I love this little feature. I mainly use this for business purchases. So obviously, you guys know I'm self-employed. I run my own business here with the blog and the podcast and the YouTube and the freelance work. So I have a lot of purchases, uh, expenses from out and about, uh, which are limited to the company rather than to my personal stuff. And this is really good. So what I can do here, if I buy something, it doesn't matter if I've selected it in advance, I can go back and I can move it to my business account just in a couple of clicks. Really, really nice feature. And obviously you can do that as well if you're finding your balance is a bit low on one account, you wanna move it around. Now obviously if you do use uh, your Curve card, it does make you overdrawn underneath, uh, that could well bring in some charges. So I wouldn't necessarily rely on this go back in time feature. You wanna make sure you have enough money in those accounts to pay. And obviously if you don't have enough money in those accounts, it might even reject the payment. Now there are a couple of other little features that's worth telling you about you can get in Curve. And you get these on a lot of the kind of mobile digital banks like Monzo and Starling. I've got a whole video about comparing them that you might wanna check out if you haven't seen it already. Uh, but great features such as freezing your card. So if you do lose it, you can freeze it, it means no one can use it. And that's actually quite handy if you think about it, the idea that if you've got lots of different cards attached to this and this goes and you freeze it, that's all sorted. You only need to get a new one of these. You don't actually have to worry about those underlying bank accounts and credit card accounts. Those cards are still fine to use, no problem at all. But that's great, I love that freeze your card feature. Again, you do see that a lot more on places now. You can check your PIN um, in the app as well. So if you forget it or not sure what it is, just open it up and check it. That's a fantastic little feature. You can also, as I say, you can get that digital card on there. Uh, just check it out anytime. So if you don't have your card, have Curve card on you, but you've got your phone, you can still make payments by getting, I say, the long number, the three digits and the expiry date. So all lovely little extra things that you can do. Now, another really good feature of the Curve is its ability to help you uh, save money when you're spending in a foreign currency, really cut down on those FX transaction fees. Now, I'm sure most of you know this already, but if you are abroad or spending money in the UK online in a different currency, euros, dollars, whatever it might be, and you're using your normal debit or credit card, you are gonna get charged extra fees on top of that MasterCard or Visa or whatever exchange rate, the base exchange rate that they are using, they will add money on top. And that can be really expensive. Now, the best way to avoid those fees, particularly if you're gonna go abroad more than once a year, go you know, quite often, can't do it right now, but hopefully when things go back to normal, you go abroad, uh, you're spending money on your card rather than getting cash out. Often it's the cheapest way to, to get your, uh, to spend when you're on holiday is to look at a specialist card from the likes of Starling or Monzo Banks, uh, or get a, um, current, a credit card from Halifax. They've got the Clarity credit card, which is really good. They don't charge you anything for spending abroad. Uh, there might be some limits on taking money out of an ATM, but there are no limits at all for your spending, and that's every day of the week, whatever day you spend money, you will get the correct exchange rate, which is fantastic. However, Curve is a really, really good backup. So I would have one of those cards or buy two of those cards as your main spending accounts abroad, but then I would take your Curve with you and that, because what they do, if you are spending on your Curve card, even if it links through to one of those expensive underlying accounts, your Santander, your NatWest, your Barclay card, whatever it might be, you will not get charged any FX rates, any of those extra charges on top of the currency conversion. So that will save you a decent bit of cash. Now, it's not perfect. So for example, if you've got that free blue version, you can only spend 500 pounds in a foreign currency every 30 days. It's a rolling 30 days, but it's a 500 pound limit. Most people, I think on holiday, there's a good chance eating out, taxis, whatever it is. If you're mainly using cards, and I tend to mainly use cards when I go on holiday now, you could probably very easily hit that 500 pound limit just on a kind of a you know, three, four day holiday. So there's also a 200 pound limit on the ATMs with that blue card, which is free, which is why I say it's a good backup. I think it's difficult to use that for your whole holiday spending and I say better options like Starling or Halifax Clarity instead. If you upgrade and get that uh, black card, the 9.99 every month, then there are limited uh, transactions you can make with the card by tapping it or using your pin. You can use it as much as you want, so as you would with Starling, Monzo and so on. So no limits there. Uh, and there's a 400 pound rolling 30 day uh, limit on cash machine withdrawals in a foreign currency. The metal version, that really expensive 15 pound one, again, 
unlimited spending with your card uh, and you get a 600 pound ATM allowance. So they make it uh, much more realistic to use those kind of more premium levels when you go on holiday. So bear that in mind, if you do want to spend more, that's an extra benefit you have. But again, later on, I'll, I'll break down what, what, what I think the difference is whether you should stick with the blue one or the others. But again, really helps you spend money overseas at no extra cost. So a, a big thumbs up the curve there. Another nice little feature uh, is some extra cash back you can earn. So uh, if you get the blue version, you get three months of 1% cash back at three selected retailers. You can choose from a long list. So they've got some supermarkets, Sainsbury's, Tesco's, Asda, Waitrose, Ocado. Um, they've got various shops, Amazon, Apple, ASOS, Ikea, Boots there on there. Travel people like uh, TFL, quite useful if you are commuting in London. There's some petrol stations, there's booking.com, there's EasyJet, uh, and there's lifestyle kind of benefits. So Netflix, there's Everyman Cinema, there's Spotify, uh, there's Cowshed, which is like a sort of a nice sort of beauty uh, and therapies retailer. Lots and lots and lots of different retailers to choose from. And as I say, at first three months with the blue version, you can get 1% back every time you spend money. And that is added to your account in a kind of little rewards folder. Uh, to use those rewards folder, you do have to manually go through, select you want to pay with those rewards, uh, and then the money will be taken out. You can't go back in time to use that rewards um, sort of uh, fund that you've accrued from cashback. The other problem you have with this as well is that you have to have uh, enough rewards in your account to cover the total cost. So say you've got five pounds of rewards, but you want to buy something at six pounds, no go. You can only buy five pounds or less purchase with that, which is a little bit annoying. But you can, I'm sure there's enough things you can find which are pretty cheap to sort of bring that down. Uh, it can make it, I guess, a little bit trickier when you're down to the last sort of pennies and things. But uh, that's a, a nice little feature. You get that for free for the first three months with blue. Now, if you upgrade and you go for the black card, again, that's the $9.99 a month card, then you get still three retailers that you can get cash back in, still 1%, but it's for the whole year. It's continuous. As long as you're paying for that uh, every month, that $9.99, you get that 1% cash back at those three different retailers. If you upgrade to that metal, again, that very expensive 15 pounds option, and then you actually get six different retailers you can earn that 1% at. Now, I think it's nice to have that first three months for free, which is lovely, but, I don't think it's worth getting uh, the extra different types of cards, the higher levels of card, just for this cashback feature because it's gonna take you a long time to justify that money you're getting back. Because a lot of these retailers are listed there. For example, you can go to McDonald's, but how much are you gonna spend at McDonald's realistically in a month? 1% of that over, you know, is no, can be nowhere near that 10 pounds. You're never gonna get near it. Maybe if you're going to buy something really big, let's say you're spending a grand on a laptop at Apple or you're buying a sofa at John Lewis or something like that, then you know that 1% can be sort of quite, uh, quite hefty and maybe it's worth thinking about uh, doing it there. But again, they're singular one-off kind of purchases and maybe you can just time when you get your curve card for that. So you get that free card and you get those three months uh, of that 1%. Uh, it's also worth bearing in mind as well that you can sometimes get 1% uh, a better rate than this using a different cashback card. At the top, I mentioned you can't use American Express with Curve. Now my Curve card gives me 1% up to 1.25% all throughout the year, as long as the retailer takes it. So I, the fact that I can't attach my Curve to it means I'm probably gonna lose out uh, on the whole using those different retailers. Now if I do attach to say that uh, my John Lewis and Partners credit card, which gives me half a percent, and then I use that uh, with a selected, let's say a retailer, Ikea is on there, let's say I chose that, um, and I paid with that, I would get 1.5%. So yes, I would increase how much cash back I get from uh, the retailer by using the underlying MasterCard with my curve, I get 1.5% rather than 1% or 1.25%. However, it is limited just to those retailers and it's not, I, I don't think it's worth it. I think if you're happy to use cashback reward cards, you're gonna get a better rate of return just by using those cards. And yeah, absolutely, of course, why not knock? Uh, if you can take advantage of it to get that little boost to 1.5% with something like the uh, John Lewis card and curve, great, but it's not a deal breaker. So it's a lovely feature to have, but don't expect to get a huge amount of money for it. Don't get a curve card just for the cashback feature is what I'm saying. 
Now, there are a few other restrictions it's worth telling you about as well. When you first get your curve card, uh, you could the blue card at least anyway, uh, there is a maximum spend of £2,000 in a day, £5,000 in a month, and £10,000 in a year. And there's a maximum of £200, £200 that you can withdraw from an ATM. Now, these can change, and the more you use your card and the longer you're with them, those limits can increase. Uh, but it's worth bearing that in mind. Some people, if you put all your spending through a curved card, or you have some particularly hefty ones, you could very quickly get to that five grand uh, in a month, particularly if you use it for business purchases, uh, and 10 grand within a year. Uh, my ones have been with Curve for a long time now, uh, they're a fair bit higher than that, and I don't seem to have any problems at all. One last feature to tell you about is something called Curve Fronted. Now, this is where you can use an underlying credit card attached to your Curve to pay off perhaps another credit card, perhaps it's a tax bill, you know, anything where there normally would be a charge for using your credit card. Now, they charge you 1.5% for this feature, and I don't think it's worth it. It's there if you want to. Personally, I've gone in, I've made sure that feature is turned off so I can't accidentally get charged that 1.5%, because I don't need to pay for anything in that way. It's not going to benefit me. I guess potentially if there's something you want to spread out, a payment over a longer amount of time, but you can, why not look at a balance transfer credit card? You could be a much better option for doing that instead. Uh, and if there is a really, really big tax bill or something that you can't afford, you don't have the money in your debit card, maybe you would consider that 1.5% fee uh, as a loan cost. But again, I don't think it's worth it. So just bear in mind that's there. It's automatically toggled off. Just make sure it is when you go into your settings if you don't want to have that as a, an accidental extra charge to your account. So they're the main benefits for it. And I think for those features, it's well worth having a curve card and using it uh, when it suits you. The big, big downside for me is lack of American Express support. That is my number one card for making purchases because it earns me the most money back in cashback every time I use it. It's the best rate out there, so it's the best return. Now, obviously, you can't use it in every single retailer. And I do have, as I say, that John Lewis and Partners credit card, cashback credit card, as my backup for when I need to use MasterCard. And that is attached to my Curve card. So unless I'm shopping in John Lewis or Waitrose where I get that boosted amount of money, I will use my Curve card um, to, to make purchases attached to that John Lewis card uh, just to get that cash back where I can. But as I say, it's not that often because of Amex not being on there. Now that might come back. It was there in the past. Um, and I know Curve have been keen for a long time, well, since they started to get Amex on there because they know it'd be good for their business but it's been well over a year since it was last on there um, and there's been no sign of it returning just yet. But do keep an eye out because it would be a, a big game changer if Amex was on there. I'm also not that bothered, as I said, about the cashback feature. Um, it's nice to have, but it's not fundamentally that important. So I wouldn't go over, uh, go out of your way to get hold of that. Anyway, so that's the blue card. I think the blue card uh, is well worth getting. When we look at those uh, black card at £10 a month and the metal card at £15 a month, I think you've got to weigh up what you get for it. So the big difference with the, say, the black card uh, is that you do get some travel insurance on there, uh, which is okay. Uh, an important thing with any package account when you get travel insurance is you need to make sure that it covers you for what you need. Now at £10 a month, so it's 120 quid a year, you've got to ask yourself, could you get an annual travel insurance policy for less elsewhere? And I think the answer is going to be yes. Which means, even if you, let's say you're paying 60, 70, 80 quid for that annual travel insurance, even if you're paying 90 quid, you're still overpaying 30, 40, 50 quid for that feature. The extra thing you get, that all year cash back, okay, great, but you've got to make sure you choose those retailers wisely, the ones where you are going to spend a lot of money. So maybe it is the supermarket you use, maybe it's somewhere where you're going to go for a big purchase, you know you're going to go and buy uh, something very, very expensive but not the smaller stuff, because you're not going to get your money back at all. You know, Netflix, £10 a month, uh, that costs you, so you'll be getting 10p, £1.20 over a year. Again, that's a long way, isn't it, to cover that big difference between buying things separately. Uh, the next one, that metal one at £15, you do get some extras on top of that. So you do get your phone insurance, you get a rental car collision waiver insurance, and you get airport lounge key access, uh, as well as I say that double the number of retailers you can get cash back with from three to six. Um, and obviously you get that metal card. Again, I've got the cheap blue version. I don't think it's worth paying extra for those things because I'm confident I can get them cheaper elsewhere and I'm not worried about getting a, a metal card. But have a look, just check the terms and conditions with those insurance policies, see what you can get. And if you're looking elsewhere, see how much they cost and you might find it's worth putting that upgrade in to get some of those extra features. But fundamentally, I think 
don't pay for them, they're not worth it, get a blue card, keep it in your wallet at all times, either use it a lot or just for when you go traveling, uh, it's a very, very handy addition to have. I'm Andy Webb from BeCleverYourCash.com, as I said. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this useful. If you have found it interesting, please do make sure you hit that subscribe button and that like button as well, uh, just below this video, uh, to make sure that other people also get to uh, find the stuff that I've just told you about, hear about all these bits and pieces as well. Let me know if you've got a curve card, how you use it in the comments. Be really, really keen to find out about that as well. Until next time, cheers.